All right. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mayor okay. Inscore, members Very of the good. council. We're going to go ahead and call our meeting to order on January 22nd, 2024. This is a special meeting of the city council of the city of Crescent City. Um, we are going to have our closed session at the end of our open session um, meeting tonight. So would you please uh, call the roll? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Here. Council Member Shalom? Here. Council Member Wright? Uh, here. Mayor Pro Tem Altman? Here. Mayor Inscore? Here. You would uh, please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready and begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> We will have a general public comment period. Any member of the audience is in, uh, invited to address the city council on any matter that is within the jurisdiction of the city of Crescent City. Comments of public interest or uh, matters on, on the agenda are accepted. No, however, the council is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non-agendized items. Such items can be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may, be inclu may include being placed on a future agenda. All comments need to be directed towards the entire council and any comments that are not at the microphone are out of order and will not be part of the public record. After receiving recognition from the mayor, please state your name and city or county residency for the record and limit your public comment to three minutes. You'll also be given an additional three minutes on each agenda item before any action is taken by the council. Any public comment tonight um, in the room? Um, Mr. Weir, I don't have a Zoom open. Is we, there any hands raised on Zoom? We do have one hand raised, and that's from Robert, Robert Drago. Oh, okay. Cheers. Thank you. Yes, Robert. Uh, hi, guys. I just wanted to, um, I can't find the agendas for the tri-agency uh, meetings. And I've written the city, I've written the county, I've written the harbor, and I don't believe they're being publicly posted. Um, I wrote one person who seems to be in the know that's written about it for the paper, and they actually said that they just get it because uh, they get them from the harbor master. So I did write the harbor master, but uh, that's not your guys' end, but the county's committee list, none of the contacts are up to date. And so I was wondering if the city would take on, um, you know, when there is a tri-agency meeting posting it on their city website, um, because right now I'm not sure that there's a clear area where we can uh, find that the tri-agency's agendas. Okay, Robert. Yes, we'll 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 look into that and see if we can't um, add that to our regular calendar so that uh, when the link is available for the agenda, uh, I do believe just for uh, for your information, the tri agency meeting that was scheduled for next Thursday is actually going to be moved to uh, the first Monday in um, February uh, because of some scheduling. So there there probably won't be an agenda posted right away, but uh, we'll make sure that we we uh, take a look at that. Um, appreciate you giving us the heads up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. It, it, uh, I don't see any other uh, hands raised online. Then we'll close our general public comment period. And uh, we have two items on consent, the amendment to the Jacobs contract for wastewater treatment plant um, along with amendment number six, and then the rainy selector variable frequency guide replacement along with resolution 2024-04. Uh, I'm going to pull item number two because we have a, a correction that needs to be made on the, uh, on the, the resolution that was in our packet. Any, any, any public comment on consent? Uh, Council, any any comments on or on uh, item number one? I would move to approve uh, amendment number zero six to the agreement for operations, maintenance, and management services for the wastewater treatment plant for the city of Crescent City, California, with Operations Management International. Jacob. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you please pull the vote? Council Member Greeno. Yes. Council Member Shalom? Yes. Council Member Wright? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Altman? Yes. Mayor Henspoor? Yes. On the rainy collector uh, 
uh, item, the uh, the resolution has the wrong number under uh, revenue. Uh, the the correct number on the actual resolution, the packet says twenty seven one six seven. The correct number is thirty two thousand one hundred and sixty seven. Uh, dollars. Everything else, the staff, the number is correct in the staff report. Everything else in the staff report remains the same. It's simply a uh, correction of the the number under revenue increase that was in our packet. Any questions, Council? Okay, then uh, if somebody would like to make a motion that we approve this with the noted uh, correction of the revenue increase, please. A quick question. First. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the quotation or the replacement of the VFD says twenty-seven one sixty-seven. So is that different than? So there is the replacement of the VFD itself under the materials side of things, and then there's also the installation of it. Uh, and so with oh, this, so it would there. So this would be the total amount. Uh, there's still some of these costs that are yet to be determined, and so there's some estimates in there. But with this, it'll give us the budgeted expenses we'll need, hopefully, to uh, to replace this, and then the revenue side of it will just be less our deductible. So from a net standpoint, that whatever the city expends will be a thousand dollars thousand dollars less. Okay. Okay. So any other adjustments, or if it goes beyond that, you'll bring it back to we, us. We would have to bring it back. We do, uh, talking to Director Yeager, we do think that it will come in uh, with within this. Okay. Any other questions, Eamon? No. All right, then I'm looking for a motion to approve this with the uh, the, the change in the revenue online. Mayor, I move that we approve and adopt resolution number 2024-04, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Crescent City, amending the fiscal year 2023-2024 uh, budget of the city of Crescent City with the amendment the, uh, under the line for revenue increase uh, slash decrease uh, $32,167. Uh, seven. dollars $32,167. Okay. <clears throat> um, just just for clarification, um, just to make sure without going back, the printed copy I have here is resolution 2024-05. Is it 05 or is it 04? Oh. It's because, 05. Uh -oh. Okay. okay. So that, that's it's another that change another from, change. from the from the packet. The pa my packet says resolution 2024-04. Oh, you know what? I apologize. No. It is zero four. So this that'll be wrong. So we'll we'll change this tomorrow. Yes. Okay. So what, what Councilmember Greeno said is is correct. Okay. And the yes, paper sir. copy that we have for me to sign will will return. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I have a, a motion. Did I get a second? Yep. Second. Pick second from Councilmember Wright. All right. Uh, please pull the vote. Councilmember Greeno. Yes. Councilmember Shalom. Yes. Councilmember Wright. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Altman? Yes. Mayor Inspore? Yes. Very good. All right. That takes care of our items on um, consent. Um, moving on under continuing business, item number three is the Dinaka Partnership Agreement. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Inscore, members of the council. We have our economic and recreation director, Ashley Taylor, here to present this. We uh, This was talked about at a previous council meeting, and the direction was to bring it back with a little bit more information. And so Director Taylor has worked with uh, the Danaka executive director, Stephanie Latour, who is also with us tonight, and uh, can hopefully answer any questions you might have. Ms. Taylor. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, so I'm here tonight to present the Danaka Partnership Agreement with the Danaka. This is a continuation of the conversation that we've had on December 18th. So as you recall, when we were here on the 18th, um, a budget was requested um, for us to enter into a partnership and help sponsor three uh, concerts in the park for the coming summer. One of those concerts would take place during the Forest Moon Festival. Um, and we, as a city, already have some budget to put towards that in terms of the trash and the um, portable restrooms. 
and then um, DeMalca would be uh, responsible for some of those fees, and the city would be taking care of about $4,000 of that, which would include booking fees, the technical services, marketing, and then uh, helping with the towing of the snowmobile to the fairgrounds. In addition to that, we we're also requesting budget for um, this next fiscal year. So that would be for three concerts because it would include two for this summer, which would be July and August, and then one during the Labor Day bash. And then we would also be looking at the concert for Forest Moon next summer. So for three concerts during one fiscal year, that would be $12,000. Um, we did kind of rework the um, agreement so that it would be a not to exceed amount which means that the city would be responsible for up to $4,000 and then any remaining fees would be the responsibility of Dumasa. Um, We also discussed prior to this meeting, um, a couple of things uh, in regards to uh, restrooms and trash pickup. So although it's not included in the budget request, one thing that we did wanna make note of is that if the city does enter into this agreement, um, that we would want to supply those things for the concerts. So it wouldn't necessarily be in this agreement, but it would be part of the economic development um, budget to have the trash and portable restroom budget for each of these events. So that would be in addition to the $4,000, uh, which would come up to about $1,000 per event. So if it's three concerts, it would be an additional 3,000 for the year. So that being said, um, if there are any additional questions, we also have Stephanie Latour here who can answer any questions that council may have. Um, it wasn't also available. Okay, council questions. I didn't any emails today, um, but it was late in the day. Um, the staff report seems to differ from the contract. So there was one um, minor discrepancy, which was in, return, in regards to the lodging. So we are going to strike that in the agreement that we actually have the city manager sign. Uh, lodging will be the responsibility of Dinaka. So uh, cost of travel and lodging will be on Dinaka? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then I had just uh, wanted to know if there was any additional outreach done to the community about them that we discussed at the last meeting. Um, no, we have not had any other communications with the community in terms of uh, offering concerts in advance. Okay. Is there a reason for that? Um, no, it just I, I think we, if we get I think it would be more appropriate to approach the community if once we're going into budget season. So at the moment we're entering a contract with Danaka saying that we would be responsible for these fees if we do these concerts. Um the only thing that we do need to decide on in terms of budget for this year is the the four thousand dollars for the Forest Moon Festival. So I think that if you would like more outreach, we could do that. I think it would be appropriate for us to move forward with something that we've already determined as a priority for the city, offering the Forest Moon Festival and offering activities that day. Um, but we will be bringing back the budget for next year, which includes additional budget for these concerts going forward. Um, so while we are entering into this contract, if there are changes that need to be made, that can always happen. If we decide we do not want to move forward with concerts further into the summer, that's up to council. I'm sorry, I thought you were asking tonight for us to also um, <clears throat> authorize putting the 12,000 into the budget. For the tonight we're we're asking to enter into the partnership agreement. So for the city manager to be able to sign that agreement, the budget for the $4,000, I do believe we discussed at the last council meeting, we would not be including the $12,000 for next year until this coming budget season. So when we have our budget discussions in May, that will be a council's consideration at that time. Any other questions? Um, I, I just don't know if if we're going to sign this contract, the twelve thousand is included in the contract. Yeah. So I would say that we would not exceed those expenses going into next summer. But this is something that if we decided we didn't want to budget for those expenses. This is also an agreement that can be can terminated upon written agreement. So if that's something we don't want to do next summer, that is at the determination of council. Okay. So this is to allow us to move forward when we do want to do a concert for Forest Moon. I think we talked about that last um, meeting. Uh, so we need to have this agreement to move forward. 
And then this would also be in place if we decide to have that budget. I feel like you're saying two different things. I, I thought you just said we were not deciding on the 12,000 tonight. We're only authorizing 4,000. And then you said the 12,000 is in the contract. So the 12,000 is in the contract because it's a not to exceed. So if we do move forward with the, with the concerts this coming fiscal year, that would be the not to exceed amount that we would commit to. But the budget itself would not be agreed upon until the fifth, until we're in budget meetings in May. So are we able to sign a contract before we've authorized the budget? So there would be. So I I, I think it's a good discussion uh, that we're having. And it's good to, to vet it all out. Uh, the the one so from what director taylor is saying so this would be an mou saying that yes we would be committing to this twelve thousand dollars could we walk that back at some point it might be a little bit tough especially given the fact that that stephanie's going to need to reach out to these the, to these acts and the the uh, bands playing right and then you start to have some of these commitments so we really would, would like the council to at least commit to the summer ones, I would think for eight thousand dollars, so that some of that outreach and we can actually get that commitment. The four thousand dollars all the way into to next year. I mean that that could be under discussion after we have the the forest moon, but but I think for the most part this this is committing to twelve thousand dollars in total with Danaka, which would be the forest moon this year for four thousand, and then eight thousand for the other summer series. Do we need to ask Linda if we can do that? Is right I mean, there. <laughs> you certainly, that certainly, certain, 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 certainly can. It would be a commitment that we would then be signing an agreement and then we would take that back as part of our budget is what would happen. So the, the money wouldn't be in, like there, there wouldn't be a budget that has it, but the commitment would be there already. Similar to that, we have other agreements that, that go into to next year's fiscal years and then that's just part of the budget or that has already been committed to yes uh, dr taylor i just have one question for you and then i have a couple of questions for stephanie um do you anticipate that this twelve thousand dollars is going to be uh in addition to whatever your budget was this year or is this is so is this going to be new new item in your in your budget, not not taking away from something that that it's already in the economic slash recreation budget. Correct. Okay. It's being addition. It will be a budget increase. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Which we don't really have the authorization to increase a budget that hasn't taken place yet. This would be the commitment to doing that. Now I at, know, but we're yeah. signing a contract. That's the yeah. Oh yeah. This would be a commitment to do that, right? And then if you wanted to try to decrease the overall economic development budget to make up for this commitment, right, you could, but that would be sacrificing something else that would typically be in there, which I think goes to Mayor and Scores question as to, yeah. is this an increase? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I was just gonna say, I mean, this to me doesn't make sense, but, Giving her a commitment if the council is going to move forward that's this way needs to happen so she can plan. Yeah. But uh, I feel like we're yeah. backwards here. Yeah. yeah, and I apologize. It is I think a little confusing with it being ahead of the budget. That makes it I think challenging to have you know forecasting mm -hmm. discussion. But uh we, we did have our budget together, but it's the actual report in our last meeting. Um and I think it showed around two hundred some thousand that we we had to, to, to get yet to allocate, so we do have some wiggle room if that's what the council is worried about. Uh, at least that was my understanding mm -hmm. from the report. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it it really isn't a matter of whether or not we have the money to do it because it clearly could simply authorize a a one time expense right now as a placeholder. To, to pay for this, the, the odd piece about this is it happens in two fiscal years, and that so, but I, you know, I, I that anyway. Um, Stephanie, do you, can, can I ask you a couple questions? You might come in up because I think the question that was just made, I think that Councilmember Song said about planning. Um, from, from your perspective, um, when will you start? Beyond Forest Moon, because that's the first. Right. But if we have three three other concerts, 
when will you start planning and looking for now. the people now? Okay. Um, Yesterday. <laughs> summer summer is uh, quite a busy time for you know, yeah. musicians. A lot of them tour um, in specific routings right. uh, up and down the coast. And so to <clears> kind of get ahead of whatever other bookings they might have so that we have a priority date with them, then they'll build the rest of their route around us instead of trying to slot us in for more accommodations. So, and, and Mr. Weird said something about the, the summer, so the two versus the next year's forest moon. Uh, my follow-up would be, um, the sooner we have a commitment to do even next year's, I, I would assume the, the better choices that are gonna be available, because I'm assuming some of these acts book out full years in advance, yes, right? It, it depends on the act, but yes, definitely a year in advance is not unusual. Okay, um, which is why I think we need to make a commitment tonight, but that's how we figure out to do that. The other question that I had was on marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the staff report, it, it lists marketing as $50. $50 is nothing. <laughs> in, mar in marketing money, that, that's nothing. I, I mean, that's that's not even a radio ad. Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I mean $50 for an entire concert, I, I mean, we don't want to tell somebody one time that this is happening. I mean, we. But Danaka gets in kind advertising with my social media. So, is the fifty dollars uh, compensation for you producing the material that's going to? It's for it's for flyers and that sort of marketing. Okay. But then also, there's a number of um, either free or very inexpensive ways to market that we usually. Okay. Uh, I, I just don't want to under market. It's, this is something that's brand new, right? We want it to be successful. And I would rather, I would rather spend a little bit more money and get it right the first time. So we build momentum from the get go mm -hmm. than to go back and go, wow, we should have, we should have spent a hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is. I, that line item here. <laughs> so I, I'm hundred percent increase. <laughs> Well, you guys know what I mean. It, 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 this is an important thing. If this right. is going to be a community community thing that's going to, we're going to set set precedent and we're going to try to build that this is going to be the future of Beachfront Park and something we want to do. We don't want to, we don't certainly don't want to undermarket. Right. And I, and, and I can appreciate that. And I think part of when it has to do with the Forest Moon Festival, that um, the concert park gets folded into the marketing sure. for the festival. And then also utilizing other things like the city's website and Facebook presence, social media presence, okay. as well as ours and our other partners to help get the word out, um, as well as the newspaper um, with uh, press releases and arts notes and posters and things. Okay. Well, I, I would just, uh, and this is for, for you, Director Taylor, I would just encourage you in working with, with uh, Stephanie and planning beyond Forest Moon where you have these one-off mm -hmm. concerts that aren't attached to something else. Mm -hmm. If in fact, in, in, in working together, you, you think we need, to, we need to look at this from a budgetary standpoint and we need to add some marketing, we need to roll in our marketer, uh, Lynette Railyard, for the other things that she's already doing. Please just come back to us with 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 that because I want us to get this right <clears> first time. Maybe it could be included in the chamber marketing. Sure, oh, chamber would be a great opportunity to do that. And also, um, I believe that that middle concert that we're looking at um, would be held probably on the first Friday. So to loop in with their marketing okay. and, and their Very program good. as well. Okay. Good, thank you. I just didn't want to, I don't want to underdo it. So but that's I'm very helpful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments? I just was going to ask, um, will the city have any advance notice of who the um, artist uh, possibilities are? Um, as in, if I, who I'm contacting and seeing if they're available? I just know that they get booked. I just know that we had pre previous conversations about making sure that these are, um, especially when they're not tied into Forest Moon Festival, mm -hmm. that they're really um, like high energy, fun, you know, that are going to draw a crowd. Okay. Um, so are you saying that you would like uh, information on the acts so for approval or disapproval? No, or? I don't know. I, I'm just, I was just asking the question. I didn't know if there was any kind of a process. 
there can be <laughs> whatever you need that's fine i mean i can send you a list of the folks that that we're considering and that we're talking to and if anybody maybe stands out to this is really not a good fit you can give me that feedback sure okay yeah that'd be great if you could just work with us on that and then we can try to provide some feedback that would be yeah we get that'd be awesome yeah okay it's a little different council meeting, but so the internet pops up. But anyway, um, we obviously with Forestman, we have a theme, mm -hmm. and I don't know if these tie ins for the other concerts can also have a theme, mm -hmm. but I think it would be important in terms of getting an act that would appropriate that theme. So if we come up with themes, so first Friday there's a tie in, mm -hmm. but if we come up with, you know, surfing theme or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, a day at the beach, the park, or something like that, but have, you know, if we can put together themes for these tie in events. You know, let you be one of those so we can maybe get an act that's representative. So okay. instead of a bluesy show with a happy, you know, right? As long as as long as we're bringing a blues band for a day to be the right. you know, right. Sure, as long that's as we knew right. kind of now yeah. what those themes might be, and then keep an eye out for yeah. acts that might that's be. Yeah, but I think that one because that would be maybe. I'd love that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, again, thank you, Stephanie. That was helpful to me. And I do, I, I appreciate the, the interactions on, on theme type of things. I think that, that when you have a, if, if we can come up with some general theme that it doesn't, you know, not that we have to have a, you know, a, a Beach Boys cover band for summer, but if we have something like that, it does make it easier, especially from the chamber mm -hmm. standpoint, with it being a fairly fairly uh, easy lift to to promote and and get people engaged with it. So I think those are some some good ideas for you to work on and come back mm -hmm. with some ideas with Director Taylor and and uh, if you uh, if you if you want input or Director Taylor wants input from from us. She knows where to find us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? So, uh, uh, Director Lever, just so that we make this as, as simple as possible, it feels to me like we should make a twelve thousand dollar commitment, to, a sixteen thousand dollar commitment tonight, right? Four thousand for Forest Moon. That's this year yeah. in this year's yeah, budget. Right. An additional. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. There's three more. Three total, right? Yes. One in this fiscal year, and then three in next. Because four is going to also take place next fiscal year. Yes. So it's four. It's increasing this year's budget by four thousand dollars, yes. right? We have yes. that, and then we're making a commitment to twelve thousand dollars for three more concerts. It oh. includes next year's Forest Moon, so that they right. that work can start now. Mm -hmm. That's, I just want to make sure that, that, that we're, however we do that, if that's a placeholder in the, in the, the budget, I mean, yeah. we put placeholders from the standpoint of, of protocol, when we have our budget workshops, we give staff direction of the things that we want in the budget. We do that in May and then we vote on it. If, if, if collectively we make a decision tonight to direct staff that this will be in the budget, it would be no different than if we were sitting here in May making the, the same thing because staff would not have any authorization to take it out of the budget unless we chose to take it out of the budget, then we can explain ourselves to staff. <laughs> so if I can make a note, the way that this is written, it's only for three concerts, one this fiscal year and two, two in the summer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's oh, 12,000 yeah. total, that's $4,000 a concert. However, as Mayor Inscore indicated and Stephanie kind of confirmed, if we did want to start working on Forest Moon for next year. You could make it a total of four, increasing this to sixteen thousand. Well, It'd be sixteen, though. Yeah. But the contract is incorrect. The contract would need to be modified to sixteen and yeah. four. Contracts. I was just yeah. I was going. Yeah. Thank you. I was going by what it said on page three of the staff agreement. It says staff would then include twelve thousand dollars in the fiscal year twenty twenty four for the remaining two concerts in twenty four and the recurring concert for the festival. For Forest Moon, right. staff report indicated that we were that the goal was 12. 12, 12 next year, yeah. for next year, yep. and that we were approving the four for this year. But you're right that that's not what the agreement says. But we can clean all that up right now if we're in agreement. <clears throat> sure. Any public comment? 
<laughs> no, that was funny. no hands are raised. <laughs> All right. Got any public comment? <laughs> do, do, oh, oh, doing is authorizing the city manager to to sign this MOU, right? We've got yeah. to make the budget agreement amendment, right? If you sign if yeah. 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 Good question: Is four thousand going to be enough? For next May, I mean, not this one, but the next one. Is it going to be enough? I mean, May 2025. Uh, if we do that, is this is all I say, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll have some time to yeah, adjust. Yeah, that. And that might be something that as we're getting a little bit closer, we can uh, get an idea. Plus, if, if we get anybody. Plus, if we get anybody um, contracted now for whatever amount that might be, that'll stick next year for their contract. Yeah. So um, uh, that might not be, that might not make them happy, but it'll happen and they'll stick to it. Good. Okay. So I think what I'm authorizing. I'm making a motion to authorize the city manager to enter into a partnership agreement with Donaka to approve $4,000 in the 23-24 budget for the Forest Moon. We already did that, didn't we? Did we, did we do no, that? Yeah. What, as far as the budget, what was discussed at the December meeting is that if council chooses to move forward with this, the $4,000 for this year will be presented in our mid-year budget request which is the first meeting in March, then you'll be giving us direction to include that. And then the next year's will be included in next year's budget as we discussed last time. We're not really doing budget tonight. So it's we're an agreement. authorizing the city manager to enter into a partnership agreement with, with Danaka for $4,000 in the 23-24 budget for the Forest Moon Festival. Okay. In addition to it is the intent of the council to have you rework an MOU that also includes three additional concerts in the 24-25 budget at $12,000. And the authorized city manager to sign that MOU. Correct. With, with, okay. the, with the other changes that Director well, Taylor pointed out. With, the, with the, the travel. travel. Second. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that was a motion. Yes. <laughs> and just Great clear, motion. Stephanie, you were, you're fine with that piece, right? The housing and the lodging piece? Yes. Okay. So we'll make sure. Okay. Okay. Um, any public comment? All right. Are you, you feel like you're clear, Mr. Weir, City Clerk? You think you have what we, our intent? All right. Very good. Could you? Yeah, pull the vote. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Shalom? Yes. Council Member Wright? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Altman? Yes. Mayor Swift? Yes. All right. Thank you. All righty. Uh, the USDA or the EDA uh, grant application for mm -hmm. the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy or SEDS uh, and um, Downtown Master Plan. It's weird. Yes, thank you, Mayor Inscore, members of the council. So more uh, economic development related items. And this is one that we've uh, discussed uh, a little bit, but there's opportunities in front of us. So the current SEDS or Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy for the county. So uh, not just the city, but the county of Del Norte, the city of Crescent City, the Harbor District. We also had stakeholders with our tribal partners last time. Uh, ran run for, runs from 2019 through 2024. So December of this year, that will end. Uh, it's through, uh, it was funded last time through the EDA. Uh, the city actually acquired the grant. We facilitated uh, a lot of the work and then the partnering agencies, the county and the harbor uh, all contributed with staff time to, to meet the match requirement. 
at that point in time, the match requirement was actually 50%. And so it was a, it was a, a little bit more substantial than it is this time because our population has actually declined over the last couple of years. We're now eligible for only 20% as far as a match goes. So that has decreased. It's estimated this countywide SEDS would be about $50,000. So that would be a $40,000 grant and a $10,000 uh, in-kind staff match that could come from uh, any of the partnering agencies. So what this uh, document would be is it would be an update to that set. So our SEDS is gonna run out or expire in 2020, December, 2024. This would take us for that next five-year period. It's important as a region that we have this document because it makes us eligible for EDA grants. Past EDA grants include uh, the grant that was uh, utilized to rebuild the RV park in 2015. And so these documents are, are very important when it comes towards, towards strategic planning as well as future grant opportunities. So that's that piece. We've talked to the uh, talked to the county and also had some uh, outreach with the harbor. We believe that we have their, uh, their partnership on this again to move forward as far as the city taking the lead and them uh, being partners on it. And then we'll also be reaching out to our tribal partners as well to see if they want to be actual the partnering agencies with it or stakeholders. In the past, they have actually completed their own said documents. Uh, so we will we will see how that goes if approved by the council directed to take forward. So that is one piece of it. Uh, our, uh, our economic development and, uh, and grants coordinator, Bridget Lacey, is with us uh, here tonight. She has done a great job researching a lot of this. Uh, she's been in contact with uh, EDA on this. And there's another piece that we've been talking about, which is the Crescent City downtown and the downtown specific plan. Uh, EDA has said they'd like to see these two uh, come together at uh, one grant, and they very much feel that uh, we should pursue a downtown specific plan. Downtown specific plans are pretty in-depth. So this would be for the amount of $200,000. It would include a community-based vision, or at least it could include. You know, we, the, we can kind of draft this based on uh, on what we need for our community, but a lot of them do include these factors. So community-based vision, uh, looking at the existing conditions, data analysis, land use designations, zoning districts, public spaces, uh, sustainability, design guidelines, concept drawings of the downtown, what it can look like, that vision, uh, funding tools, and then an implementation plan. Uh, if you Google downtown specific plans, you will find most communities do have that. So you have your general plan, and then you, when you're looking at a specific area, and it, and it really is time for us as a community. If you look at, our, especially our zoning, it, it doesn't line up where it's very intuitive towards the actual development that we're looking to see in our downtown. So this would be the type of tool that we can use to pair with the regional SEDS. You have this downtown specific plan. <laughs> You'd think that as a, a, a as a uh, as an engineer, I'd be able to uh, to get that one, but it always trips me up. Um, and then it also goes with our EdSAP itself, which has those uh, those economic development recipes. Uh, that one is again a twenty percent match, so this one would be forty thousand dollars. We would not have our regional partners with this. We're estimating at a minimum we would be able to contribute somewhere around ten thousand dollars of just staff time and us working with a consultant. Uh, leaving thirty thousand uh, dollars for the city to match out of the out of the economic development uh, uh, fund itself, and so we the council did budget thirty thousand dollars for economic development. It is currently unspent, could go towards this. So we're anticipating that we will have existing budget to do it. Question about the thirty thousand was earmarked for tri agency? No. No, so we have we have tri agency uh, contribution, which uh, which that is uh, moving forward. And in fact, we did receive a, an invoice from tri agency, so that money will go towards tri agency. This is thirty thousand dollars that we have set aside. It's actually ARPA money, I believe, uh, that we have utilized in the past, and that's what's in this year's budget for economic development. In the past, we've used it for grant applications for Front Street, um, working with. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other expenditures? Do you remember, Linda? Um, I think there was some that may have gone toward getting the art exhi exhibition up and going, and there was some grant applications, and there was some community outreach, I think. But there is $30,000 currently that does not have a, a specific project assigned to it on that money. Questions? Um, I have one question. Yes. Um, looking at the schedule, submit application, award announcements, 
contract contract execution and project begins, and then the grant the grant uh, expires on the thirty first. Uh, oh, 2026. Never mind my question. I, th I thought you said December this year. Well, our current SEDs would expire December of this year. So even though the grant deadline for expenditure would be January of 2026, we would want to have, or at least the SEDs portion of it, done before that. So then we have an active SEDs. Having those regional priorities will lend itself towards our downtown specific priorities as well. And so our downtown might uh, bleed into 2025 probably will bleed into 2025 but we'll be done before this january 2026 expenditure deadline oh we just have to meet we just have to have all of our uh plans done by december to get it by no so we would we would go ahead and make an application and once we have council authorization there's not really a set deadline for it, but there is a pot of money that EDA does have. And so that's where we're anticipating the award would be uh, in April and then we'd be under contract in June. We would have about six months then at that point to complete the regional SEDS document. So that'll be done by December of 2024, right about the same time our other one expires. That's so the, la the last <clears throat> item is just that's the last date that you can spend money it has to be spent by yeah. that time that's the final mm -hmm. if there was yeah. if it didn't take all the fifty thousand dollars and there were like because we do a what a two-year update on the seds i mean so that if there was if, if there were any addendums after the initial filing was made or completion yeah. if there was still money available we could use that for any amendments to the seds or something like that if you got up to two years to spend all the money yeah basically if yeah depending on how that that goes the contract amount right all that i was just curious um dr taylor if you've done any analysis of the SEDS and anything you would like to see the council um address in the new documentation um in general i think our SEDS is pretty outdated. It happened before COVID, and so there are a lot of priorities that don't really reflect, I think, where they currently are in the county. So I would imagine there are quite a few things that need to get updated. I don't have anything specific to, you know, bring up here, but I, I think that there's going to be a lot of things that are or, are already beginning to come together to, to talk about. So, yes, there's going to be a lot of changes in the, in the SEDS. Mm -hmm. Still a pretty tight schedule for government speed. If you have to <laughs> the, the, yes, the, the 2026, I'm pretty confident in the, the, the completing it by December of 2024, bringing all the, because the, the, the challenging part of this is on the, the regional sets, because it's not just the city. So it is pulling all those meetings together with the, all the stakeholders and the county, the harbor, our tribal partners, making sure we have the input and then bringing it all together for the for the three different agencies. So that was the challenge last time. <laughs> but but important and now is the time it is really. And so that's where we, we do need to get that piece in place because it, it is directly tied to future funding opportunities for not just the city, but also the harbor and the county. I have to say it's a great opportunity uh, for us to, uh, to utilize a grant instead of general fund dollars. So I, I, I think this is a great opportunity. Um, are we ready for a new motion at this point or, or do we need a... Yeah, do we, I, we don't have any hands raised. I, I Yeah, I, I will just, my, I'm supportive of, of these. The, the reality is, is um, at some point in time, uh, we need to start allowing these documents to to be driving influences on the decisions that we make the the reality is 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 uh, many of our policymakers are not familiar with the content of the existing sets or even our our specific edsap um and so I, as a cautionary piece the sets we have to do anyway but, but if we don't learn how to get this out of a binder and, and, and into our community, 
then we are all we're doing is 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 rubber stamping a process, and we're not going to ever see economic development take place. And this, and and that concern really hits home for me with the downtown master plan. I firmly believe we should do this, but uh, when you look at the number of of recipes that have been that, that have been cooked out of our EdSAP cookbook, it is very easy to have a document and and it not actually have a real value when it comes to developing an economic strategy. And so we there's a lot of work involved in this beyond just collecting data. Uh, I firmly believe that, that, that the SEDS, even the one that exists, um, has a has a strong framework uh, that 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 there's plenty in there right now that would give a driving influence uh, for economic development. Um, unfortunately, and this was an argument that I've made at Tri-Agency, when people don't even know what the SEDS are, they don't understand the team's acronym, they don't realize the, all the work that's been done, and they haven't analyzed it and said, okay, let's put this to work. Um, here we are five years later and we're, we're gonna do it again. And at some point in time, we should stop just producing documents and stop start making the commitments for long term development uh, in our in our community. It's hard work. I get it, but so but we need to do this. We need to learn that it's not just a revolving door of reports. Um, and, and, and that's not just the city. That that right. that's that's right. so. May I? Yeah, yeah, please. So I I think this is a great opportunity, and it may be a great opportunity for once this is completed. This may be marching orders for the tri agency. This yes. may be something that goes before the tri agency, and they they decide, hey, these we're going to take this project or that project out of the sets, and, and we're going to focus on that. You're exactly. So right. I mean, we we spent so much time tied up in uh, the back group in in in, in dealing with the, the problems with tri agency. Now I think this can really be a springboard into getting some great solutions to some of our our. Uh, economic development problems in our community. Absolutely. You're, so, you're spot on, Mr. Graham. Mm -hmm. The other ask I'll make of council, because you, you're exactly right, that this needs to be a living document mm -hmm. and it can't just be staff, right? It's got to be staff and the policymakers. And so if we could get two council members that would like to work on this project with us, that would be, I think, really beneficial as we, you know, look at the priorities and then we take it because it's going to have to have budget allocated to it and just, you know, working on those things, I think, would be really valuable. I'd love to. Yeah, and, I, and if, if unless somebody else is just dying to do it, I, I would really like to do this because I think that I probably have spent more time in the sensing than I'd like to admit. <laughs> uh, so, okay, we will... Uh, do we need to agendize that for to to establish an ad hoc or do you, do you... just if we have council consensus okay. then those two would be the ones working on it That's then not... i think we're okay Shreena, you want to go ahead and make a motion please absolutely mayor i move the uh we direct staff to prepare an application for the eda funding to update 2019 to 2024 delnor county SEDS and complete the downtown master plan I have a motion and a second. Would you please pull the vote? Council Member Greenell? Yes. Council Member Shalom? Yes. Council Member Wright? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Altman? Yes. Mayor and Stuff? Yes. Awesome. All right. Up to work ahead. Good stuff. Um, number five on our agenda Pebble, Pebble Beach, from the, uh, uh, my turn. Pebble Beach Drive slide repair budget agreement. That is it. Didn't sound right. I think I wrote, read all the right words, but <laughs> that, that is a challenge, you know. Actually, uh, so yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor and Score members of the Council. Uh, I've Director Yeager talk a little bit about this and what's before you with the uh, with the proposed budget amendment. I, I well, yeah, I just yeah. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> so. Basically, as you all know, we had a slide on the block between 7th and 8th, um, just south of the, the previous slide, which I think I learned in the history here that <clears throat> 2017, uh, we had previous slide action and we started going after Pebble Beach. Uh, a DAF was set up, another acronym, I don't know what that means, but uh, set up for, fun, for federal funding to 
potentially repair this damage from 2017. Just in the south of one of those previous slides, the, we had the major existing slide out. And so we currently have an intercut road section. Um, if you tie that section, it's probably 70 feet wide. Um, if you tie this section with the previous slide, we're looking at about 140 feet of roadway that we would like to get repaired. So what I'm before you this evening looking for is, and so I guess to include that, uh, we have had conversations with Caltrans. Um, they're trying to, enough damage to be done throughout the state with that we can start with it, that they are trying to mop our claim money with others and go to the feds with the new gap. And so that provides, so basically that will not step outside the Coastal Commission and, and the other roadblocks to the larger project, which was to fix the city's uh, previous 2017 damage and repair that. The 2017 damage was almost like free that they were going there. was a point of mercy. They're treating as such, but basically they're going to put in solar power walls and rock revetment before the next slide happened, right? Didn't happen in time. So here we are today with actual an emergency, a closed road. Um, and so Caltrans uh, funding is behind us. We think, you know, this is all subjective. We're week two, we're having a meeting with Caltrans this week, as well as the Coastal Commission this week to further this process. But in the meantime, what I'm before you with this evening is, you know, we do have some items that we have to take care of. Um, the slide out there is still active. Um, it is still a risk to obviously traffic. It's also a risk to the public. And then we are assuming that um, we will need some, whether it be geotechnical or some engineering to get us to the next phase of what do we actually do? If somebody comes up to us more and says, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, what we don't know, what we don't know is there's a bunch of dirt on some rock. They did do borings. There was actually a boring at that location, but it's in the road 10, 15 feet. We don't know where the toe of the slope of the existing bluff is right now. You know, so there is some work looking ahead. If somebody said, you know, what are you gonna do tomorrow? If we went out there tomorrow and started building this, we would need some engineering work. Um, so the list that I provided to obtain this budget that we're asking for this evening. <laughs> Uh, this is a wild name. Pine Snowy Tours put posting around uh, probably about a third of our barricades blew over this weekend. You know, we did a beat job. <laughs> There's Can a major a big cement barricades across that people can't drive through. The problem with that, okay, yes and no. Uh, the problem with that is you have to tape with those. So you can't have them right at the end of the street. So that would, yes, that may be one route we go to. Um, mm -hmm. But you can't just abruptly do what the county did, which is put a perpendicular roadway. If somebody was to hit those, you'd be liable. They need to be a 10 to 1 way back. So, so yes, we can, but no, we can't. But you have to angle them. So if the car was to hit them, it would be a head on. You can go put concrete block across the road and close it off. Then you're liable for anybody hitting it. So, sort of like this. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so we can, but that's an expense as well. And then you still have to do a detour. So, the detour we have set up is sufficient to keep people, to keep vehicles out of there. We just need to make it more permanent. So I'm asking for about four grand to buy real real signs, some additional barricades. Um, additionally, looking at um, because we still have people out there daily standing on the undercut asphalt. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's gonna be an interesting interesting discussion with a pedestrian. But regardless, uh, we need to go out there and pull that curb and pull that asphalt and let people know so they're not standing because some at some point it's gonna go. You know, we just don't want anybody standing on what happens. So I'm asking for $5,500 uh, rough budget to pay for a contractor. Uh, we do need to vote for coastal and also to slow down the deterioration and put some road control, probably this screen over the slope, some hand sandbags, hay bales, so we don't have any water going over that edge, and then some budget here for uh, preliminary injury costs. So I'm asking for this evening is $31,000 to put into a budget that we can at least have some place to spend money. In the meantime, where is it coming from? The money. You know, until I tell somebody's offering to give it to, I mean, that's it, it, that's the point be, of this. be general fund is what it would have to be for now. We're going to have a conversation again with Caltrans on Wednesday, try to get an idea of what the an actual emergency looks like and when we might expect some sort of reimbursement. Sounds like the the state is at least engaging in a conversation with the amount of damage that was, especially had in Humboldt. 
Uh, Del Norte County has already declared an emergency. The next item is for us to declare emergency. So Del Norte County actually declared it a few days before they needed to breach the lake. The state's lumping all of this into the one disaster. So we are expecting it, that this will be hopefully eligible and there will be some money to reimburse us. If it's state only, which is most likely, that'll be at a 75% uh, reimbursement rate. For now though, this would be 100% general fund. Uh, trying to have the seed money to uh, to start to address it from a pure safety standpoint and then get the ball rolling and engineering wise to get those plans and the the reports they need to actually get us the money. Does Caltrans have any extra barricades and detour signs that we could use? Um, would they let us have them? Well, typically, well, they, typically, they do not. Yeah, typically, they do not. You discuss Caltrans maintenance. A lot of times it's an, it, you could ask OES for those like during a disaster and they would bring them in from other parts of the state. You know, we've done it with even like sandbags or something like that. Uh, but typically it's just for that, you know, immediate emergency, you know, and then you have to give them back or replace them once your, once your emergency is over. So that's where we'd be looking for probably something a little bit more permanent at this point. Even on the, question, the two blowouts on one to one. Caltrans went out there with the signs of barricades one of the weeks they made a contractor and installed them so they get their stuff back. Because basically, anything you took from them in terms of detour signs or barricades would just come out of there. Caltrans does not own them as a general here for borrowing this. They have them in their maintenance yard. So anything we were to get from them, they would need to turn. So in case they have their windows, okay. so they don't have a surplus. So when you're seeing stuff on one on one, you know they will set it up so there's no danger. Wait to have it within a week or so. They'll put a contractor out there. Mm -hmm. And then my last question is, um, is it uh, feasible to uh, talk to the Measure S committee about funding from Measure S for this particular project like we did with the pool when we had the roof issue? Certainly could if uh, if that's council uh, direction. Once we find out a little bit more, I mean, Pebble Beach is a is a major collector road, very important for uh, for this community and. So I would think as we start to see what this funding picture really looks like, uh, that could be a, an option for the for the council and measure S committee. Is it in in the end, it's most likely there'll be a local share, and it, whether it be seventy five percent, twenty five percent local, if we can get federal highways to also come in like uh, previously, then then there's a three percent match. There'll be some local match the city will need to take on in one way, shape, or form. Or there's also the tax also. No. Yeah. Uh, there's that potential as well for yeah. kind of normal. Director Yeager, from just from what you have learned about what we had already done from the 2016-2017, um, is the the current active slide. Is that going to dramatically change um, the project if we were doing the whole project? The whole project is a thirty-three million dollar project now, and it's gonna, and it's going to be more by the time we we figure out a strategy and get coastal on board. Does what has what happened uh, with this storm event? Has that changed anything? Do you think from the overall scope of the of the the project that already existed? No, so you answer that two ways. So the easy answer is no. <laughs> um, what we've done, I sent the guys out today to look at it specifically and do some measurements because part of what we've been tasked with Caltrans is come up with a budgetary number. Well, how do you do that? Um, so there was two original theories with the previous one was strictly with that, but the second one, more expensive version, and the coastal axe is a soldier pile wall and type axe. So we're using the current design. So we have a current design referred by the Coastal Commission, that is going to be what we're going to base our budget on. The other answer to that question is why I sent them out today was to basically, because the original 2017 scar in the road, the depression there, which did it change over the storm, I don't know. But we basically took this current design to the upper, the north limit of, of that slide, which mm -hmm. gets us to the lookout. And so, that portion heading south, we did shorten up the south end because we can't justify going another hundred feet to the south. But we will there, so there would be a slight whatever happens at the southern end, you know, there would be a slight deviation or we have to do some sort of contour when we came back to the rest of it. But the majority of the so the length of the slide is 70 feet. What I'm going to ask money for is 140 feet of the wall. So that basically from the 20 feet to the south of the current slide to the northern end of that wall section, 
once it gets to the pop out and the bluff, then it goes strictly for that. But, and so it, it, when you're back, it's, it's obviously in a small, but we're going to do something that's compliant and cohesive with with uh, the, the plan itself. We're actually using the existing plan in elevations and two tie backs as our, as our proposal or proposal. We're getting cost up. So I've got Tidewater lined up to contact drill tech. You obviously work with Tidewater. I work with drill tech and Tidewater is currently working with drill tech to get pricing on the drill as the pile of the walls. And so we should be able to use those numbers based off this engineering to prevent a little budget. What's the current plan for detour? Well, right now it's, you know, just that one block is closed. I would think we need to look at 6th Street itself, though, uh, rather than pulling people on the Pebble Beach and then turn them back down 7th. You know, just have people that are going northbound just continue on what what it used to be Taylor Street yeah. right there. So continue on Taylor past 6th, possibly all the way up to 9th. Yeah, uh, we'll take Taylor at 9th. We won't close Pebble Beach at 9th, but we'll put advanced signage and detour signs at 9th. And then the thing we're missing now is all the detour streets for those coming down Pebble Beach, kick them over at night, and then kick them down Taylor and get back on. We have not put in the detour signs of the block itself. But yeah, we took the plan, my plan detour was worth just to run about from six up to Taylor tonight. And then they would still be able to do a stop in there, we'll stop and start off between seven and eight. But there are no driveways on Pebble between seven and eight, so we're not. Adversely affecting in your current balance. Apparently, the house that is completely blocked is canvas pink with the sea. Yeah, and their driveway is actually on. Oop. Her driveway on eight. Yeah, on eight. On the Drazel house on the true. Mm -hmm. That's got driveway in both as well. Eight and seven. I, I mean, I'm supportive of the funding yeah. request. It's interesting. Councilmember Greeno brought this up at last at our last <laughs> local transportation commission meeting about is there any other funding opportunities? We're going to have to figure out something. And then we had a slide what four days later or something. The reality is, is at some point in time, because e even at three percent, so at some point in time, this the the, the council is going to have to probably make a commitment to spend a million dollars. To get this fixed, because even it, even if that's why I was asking whether or not it's it's changing dramatically the scope, um, you know, because that's what we're talking about is a million dollars that it's going to take us to get this project done, and I know we don't have a million dollars laying around, but we can't afford to lose Pebble Beach either. Yeah, and you're, you're talking about the larger but, Pebble Beach yeah. project. He's through three percent of the estimated thirty million. Yeah, wouldn't be. And it's One not minute. even the 3% match that's the biggest problem. It's the timing of the reimbursement. Yeah, I, yeah, problem. figuring out how do we how do, how do we float a loan for a million dollars? For 30. For 30 million dollars. Yeah. For, no, for a million dollar commitment, but a 30 million dollar uh, reimbursable yeah. line of credit or whatever, however it takes yeah. to do it. I, I don't know how we do that. I don't know unless... Unless the funding strategies dramatically change at, at federal level, I don't know what. I mean, it was one thing to to do that with you know just under seven hundred thousand dollars for that with that yeah. question mark. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm interested also with Caltrans funding because I mean the state is what thirty seven billion dollars in debt right now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So. And two years ago, we were ninety seven billion dollars. To the good. Yeah. All right. Point so, of order. But yeah, I mean, it is a certain. Let's get back to what we're doing. All right. We are. Now you guys are talking about state deficits. So. I was well, talking about I mean, Caltrans funding. Mm -hmm. I know. So this is for emergency public safety. It's a no brainer. We just got to get the cones up and get it secured so no one's falling down the, the chasm and, uh, we got the proper road blocking up, so we don't we're not liable for people getting hurt. That's what we're doing today. So, Mayor, would would we um, need to bring this back as a, a separately agendized item to talk about <clears throat> potentially lobbying our uh, state um, our state representatives to see if there's the potential for some kind of uh, I don't know. The state has revolving uh, state state revolving funds or whatever at times. 
Um, I think it's a I think it's a good question. Maybe maybe there's an opportunity for a new program where the state has a revolving fund for smaller communities that have these kind of issues, um, where we pay. I think we basically take them back, where they they take on the burden and then it's paid back through the through the feds uh, as as the project progresses. I mean, I'm I'm trying to come to some kind of a solution here yeah. uh, I, I don't because know. it's it's kind of outside our. Yeah. I, I don't <clears> know. Maybe air from you know, I don't know that one's crisis scale, but I don't know that the because this is a emergency, not. A proactive emergency with an actual physical. I don't know if the terms for this DAP 2024 will be the same as the DAP 2017. Mm -hmm. gotcha. and that would be the whole three, three parts yeah. of it. And also, it is Caltrans asking for this information, but they're the ones asking the feds for the money. Okay. So we're not relying on the Caltrans. Uh, it says Cal OES, but they're just whether it be Cal OES or Caltrans asking for the money from the feds. So I think that's the subtle difference. I think that's probably the larger jam that happened is. Is the previous Pell Beach project was buildable, buildable, and the coastal way is that no, you do it this way, and all of a sudden went from a three and a half million dollar project to a 33 million dollar project. Gotcha. I think we're looking more at you know, my, how my, is this whole going? We're just trying to get, you know, barricades, hazardous removal, erosion, engineering costs, 31,000 mm -hmm. bucks. Why are we talking about all this long term stuff that's coming, uh, you know? 19 meetings from now. Point of order. Are we going to do the emergency barricades? And this little list right here is all we're supposed to be voting on. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude, but it's kind of dragging on a while, isn't it? Well, the issue is, is this I mean, is a bigger uh, issue than no, just it's, the barricades. It's slide. And, and I understand, what, I understand the, that we need to move this meeting on, but I think that planning is in order for this project to be successful. Okay. <clears throat> so if we have to re-agendize this and bring it back to a different a dif uh, different meeting, I'm okay with that as well. Mayor, I don't know if that's okay. If we, we have any public it. have any public comment no. on, on this item. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Move to approve and adopt resolution number 202405, the resolution of city council to be a present city amending fiscal year 2324 budget. Uh, for the city. Thirty-one dollars. Thirty-one dollars. Got a motion? Do I have a second? I got a motion and a second. Second. I got one already. <laughs> Who is the second? Me. Councilmember okay. Wright. All right. Would you please pull the vote? Councilmember Greeno. Yes. Councilmember Shalom. Yes. Councilmember Wright. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Alden. Yes. Mayor Inspector. Yes. Uh, Staff, as as uh, as the storm things roll out, and with both with OES, state, federal highways, it's appropriate for us to come back and discuss um, options for for an emergency fix, which in fact could be very different. We know that with last chance grade, we were always told from federal highways, if it fell into the ocean, we could fix it now. And the funding strategies are different under those circumstances. So please keep us in, in informed and we will agendize it uh, uh, as necessary for, for those options. Yep. We'll, Thank you, yep. appreciate it. We have a, like I say, we have that meeting on Wednesday with Caltrans and Coastal, we'll also bringing our tribal partners on that. And so for the council, please plan on at least getting an update uh, on Pebble Beach on our next meeting. If there's any action items, we'll certainly agendize it. Thank you. All right, the last thing which is connected is the local emergency declaration. Um, and I trust that everybody has seen the the resolution. This is necessary so that we can put ourselves in, in line for any potential funding, funding that comes for the emergency. Anything else that you need to say about this, Mr. Weir? No. All right. Uh, any comments, Council, on the declaration of emergency? Any public comment? All right, close public comment then. And uh, would you please pull the vote? No. I, I got a motion. I'm sorry. Lawyer Pro Tem, get me all. We have some place to go. I was like, look at this. All right. I'll make the motion to approve the top resolution number 2024 06, a resolution of the city council of the city of Crescent City, ratifying the proclamation 
of the Director of Emergency Services proclaiming the existence of a medical emergency. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Now you can pull the vote. <laughs> Councilmember Greeno. Yes. Councilmember Shalom. Yes. Councilmember Wright. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Altman. Yes. Mayor Ansel. Yes. Very good. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, and we uh, we are going to be uh, going into closed session. Um, we have one item on our closed session conference with labor negotiator representative um, uh, Eric Greer, or one unrepresented employee with fire chief. Uh, do we anticipate anything to report out of closed session? No. Okay. We're not anticipating anything. So we thank you, those who joined us uh, via Zoom and, uh, for being there. And we will adjourn till our next regular scheduled meeting uh, on February 5th, 2024, Clinton. Okay. Okay.